Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Stephanie here. Um, I just want to thank you guys so much for supporting my channel, all the comments, all the likes, all the shares, and just the way you guys encourage me and push me. I love you guys so, so much. Um, so if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Stephanie Hammond. I am 25 years old. I got married back in August 2019, so I am pretty much a newlywed, and I love talking about faith, related topics, but mostly I like to talk about relationships, marriage, um, and I also do lifestyle content. So if you are here for that, please make sure you don't leave without subscribing. But yes, if you guys want to hear a positive birth, labor and delivery story, then please keep watching this video. Whew, man, it's crazy to be recording this right now. I don't know why I'm getting emotional, but oh man, okay, uh, maybe it's hormones, who knows. Okay, so I don't even know where to start, but I'm gonna look at my phone because I take pictures all the time, and a good way for me to kind of know like where I was is through pictures. So let's take it back to um, like my third trimester in general. Um, so my pregnancy was really, really good. Like God is just so, so, so amazing. Um, my pregnancy was wonderful. There is nothing that I can really, really complain about. Um, so um, during my pregnancy, I did have dreams that I was going to lose my child. Um, I had several dreams that I was going to lose my child um, and if you're a dreamer like me you know that oftentimes you have dreams from the enemy and you know that sometimes God will show you things so that it does not happen and I thank God for my journey because I learned a long time ago that when I see something from the enemy that I do not like that there's power for me to begin to rebuke that and I know some of you guys are kind of confused because you're like, wait, we just found out about your pregnancy. Well, that's one of the reasons why I kept my pregnancy a secret because I know how the enemy works. The more information he has and the more you expose, the more he's able to use certain things against you. So that's why a lot of you guys didn't find out about my pregnancy until later on. But that's besides the point. So I had... Um, I had some of those dreams and I rebuked them, you know, I canceled them in the name of Jesus. I was praying um, against those dreams. I remember having a dream um, in particular where I had the baby and when, when the baby came out, I heard the enemy say lifeless. So from that day, I kept speaking life into my child. And you see, that's what you have to do when the enemy talks to you about something, you have to say the opposite of what the enemy is saying. I kind of had fears about labor and delivery in general because I thought to myself, how in the world is a baby about to come out of down there? All I could think of was pain. Two, the word contraction scared the heezy out of me. Like I was like, contractions, that sounds like death because I'm just hearing about how much they hurt and then, you know, my doctor was amazing as well. So um, by the grace of God, and I prayed and I said, Lord, I want a Christian doctor 
Um, and I and I and I remember like just looking online and looking online and looking at names and then praying over the names. And then my doctor was Christian. Thank you, Jesus. Well, my OB, so the one that saw me during the pregnancy. So I remember at my third trimester appointment, my doctor, um, I would ask him, "Hey, well, what do con what are contractions supposed to feel like? Because I'm reading things online. People are saying it's like your muscles coming together and coming apart." and they're talking about how like it can feel like you've gotten hit by a car and all these things and these things were just terrifying me and so at my 36 week appointment um everything was fine i mean by my 35th week appointment the baby was already head down but i didn't think anything much of it and um I remember like I just kept praying and, and the part about my labor and delivery that I just give God glory for is the fact that um, there were things that I said in my heart to the Lord but I didn't vocalize them because I just I didn't want it's not that I didn't want to bother the Lord but I was also I also had the mentality that like birth is going to go how it's gonna go you know and in my head i was like it's supposed to be painful that's what it is unfortunately like you're gonna feel pain and you're gonna have to endure so in my mind i didn't bother god too much with like how to really handle the de de labor delivery all i was really praying for was like um what what i focused my prayer on the most was a healthy baby and that the baby will just come out healthy but then as time kind of went on in my heart i started to pray like lord give me strength to endure this because i don't know what i'm gonna do so on june 5th i wrote in my journal and i'm gonna put a little bit of that uh, right here and I was just praying for a safe delivery I asked the Lord that let there be angels in the room let your presence just come into this place God like watch over your son watch over me oh God and I and I prayed that prayer in my journal I remember maybe a week before I went into labor I saw a testimony and this girl was saying you know she went to her appointment and she was already five centimeters and that is a blessing you know and i remember in my heart tapping into that testimony so make sure you guys just keep that in mind for the rest of this um story so i tapped into it i said lord let that be my portion and i really that was really my heart's desire was to have a quick labor and delivery guys that was in my heart but i wasn't um I, I was kind of like, you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I also did not have a birth plan. Um, I was just like, I want a healthy baby and I want my child to come back home with me. I want my child to just come out the way he's supposed to come out. I don't want a C-section. Like I was very like just simple about it. And on June 8th, I um, had such a wonderful day. I woke up in the morning. I had two Chick-fil-A sandwiches, breakfast sandwiches. I had two of the venti Starbucks drinks. Like I was living the life. It was such an amazing day. Um, I, I remember spending some time in the kitchen like frying plantains and um, serving my husband dinner and then as the night went on, I started having like muscle pains, which is very normal for me. That was something that was very normal during my pregnancy. Like I always had pelvic pain. I went on, me and my husband get ready for bed. And it's about, I wanna say it's about midnight. So I then find myself tossing and turning, but in my head, I'm tossing and turning because I have muscle pains, which has nothing to do in my book I didn't read anything about when you have muscle pains during labor so that labor was far from my mind and I was also only 37 weeks and to me I was like I didn't think I was gonna have um, the baby early and the funny thing was I low 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 key wanted to have the baby a little bit early and that's something that I had also said in my heart to the Lord anyways so it's about midnight and then around 2 a.m. I want to say 1.30 to 2 a.m. I start having cramps. I start having what feels like 
period cramps. And this was very weird for me because even when I did have my period, I didn't really experience many cramps. So it was a really weird feeling to begin to feel period cramps. And to me, contractions aren't supposed to feel like period cramps because that's what I read somewhere, guys. So I'm just not even thinking that that is the case. The night is going on and I'm just tossing and turning because I have these cramps and they're not going away. So I'm like, okay, what is going on? So then, you know, I get on my app, I have the What to Expect app and I'm just reading things, reading things. And literally in my head, I'm like, there is no way these are contractions, like contractions are not supposed to feel this way. Um, so then I'm like, okay, maybe I should start timing these, you know, I should probably start timing these, but they weren't consistent. It was about 2 a.m. and I was having this pain, like, every 30 minutes, and that was only for an hour, literally from 2 to 3. So then I go to the bathroom because I'm like, oh, I must have ate something really bad. You know, let me go use the bathroom. So I use the bathroom, number two. Sorry, guys, if that's too much information for you, but number two. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I just had a bad, bad stomach ache. Maybe I ate something because I did use the bathroom and it was after that I thought I felt fine. So I go back to lay down again and the pain is still there. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm kind of enduring the pain. And this is all within like the span of an hour. I'm kind of enduring the, the period cramps. And then I'm like, okay, maybe I need to use the bathroom again. Maybe I have like diarrhea or something or whatever. So I go to use the bathroom the second time. Hmm. Those cramps, eh? It then is was feeling some kind of way that I was like, hey, this cramps this one hmm. I was even scared to use the bathroom because I was like mm -mm, something is not right so at that point I wake up my husband and I'm like babe my my stomach hurts <laughs> and I feel so bad because he was in deep sleep and so we're both just like we're both just kind of like looking at each other and he's he's the sweetest like he just was trying his best to like make me comfortable and do everything so that you know I felt comfortable so he starts going on Google and he's like okay like what are Braxton Hicks so Braxton Hicks are supposed to be false contractions um, so now uh, we're just kind of like trying to make sure that this is actual labor because we don't want to go to the hospital just for them to send us back into action mode. We both just kind of went into action mode, but I was very in denial that I was actually in labor. I'm like, this can't be labor because I should be in excruciating pain. That's what I thought. So after a while i i had an app on my phone it was a contractions app and so i believe that when we went to my ob appointment my 36 ob appointment my doctor told me look if the contractions are like two to three minutes apart then you should be like for a couple of, that's what he said two to three minutes for a couple of hours go to the doctor that's what he told us right so now I start from about three to four, um, or I think it was like three to four something. Yes, three to four, I am tracking these contractions. And at this point, you guys, they are about a minute apart, a minute apart, and they're only like 30 to 40 seconds long. And sometimes they would even be less than a minute apart. And so that's how we knew, like, oh, these are not Braxton Hicks. This is actual labor. But me, I was still in de denial because, again, I am not in excruciating pain. This hurts, but it was very bearable. Thank you, Jesus. So now, like, I am walking around the house. I'm walking around the house, and these contractions are coming, and they're coming, and they're coming, and they're coming. And, um... At this point, my husband puts worship music on and I am worshiping in the house like and things are happening very fast, but we were very calm. And I think that was something that was only God. Um, and so I'm walking around the house and da 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 da. So 
once we see that we monitored my contractions for that for an hour and they kept getting closer and closer and closer sometimes they would flunk fluctuate but they just kept getting close so um i ended up going in the shower my husband starts packing my stuff and um unfortunately guys my hospital bag was like not even halfway packed yeah so my husband my poor husband had to pack all of our stuff he had to pack his stuff my stuff and um literally like all we had we just only had a couple of things. My husband was really, really good at getting all of our stuff in. I hopped in the shower. Contractions were still coming. Um, and I will say on a level of 1 to 10, the pain of the contractions when I was at home was like a 5. Maybe a 4 or 5. So I feel like that is only the Lord. Like the way God did things is things happened so unexpectedly that it didn't allow me time to think or even have fear. So that's something I truly give God glory for. Things happen so fast and I'm a thinker and sometimes I tend to overthink, but y'all, I ain't have time to think. It was just like, this is happening. So our stuff gets packed, we rush in the car, we go on our way to the hospital and at this point i'm in the car and it felt like the longest car ride ever and i feel like at that point the contractions started to kind of hurt a little bit more and at this point they were still feeling like to me they felt like period cramps like just like intense period cramps um but i was handling them by the grace of god y'all by the grace by the grace of god he literally gave me supernatural strength um, so, uh, we're in the car, whatever, and the one thing that I was afraid of was like, well, what if they send us back home? Because I had watched all these YouTube videos and all these stories about women going to the hospital just to get checked in and go through all these things and get sent back home because they weren't actually in labor. So, we get there and, um, you know, because COVID is going on, they gave us masks, they had to check on our temperature. Thank God, like, we didn't have to take the actual COVID test. They just gave Gave us mask and everything so we get there and they take you to what's called a triage room and in this room is where they kind of check you they check if you are actually in labor by checking your cervix and this was something I was so afraid of so we get there and you know the whole time I'm just like man I hope I'm actually in labor because if this ain't labor then I'm in trouble So it's six something. Um, was good, G. She's <laughs> she started having contractions around two o'clock. She woke me up at three o'clock. We waited about an hour just to make sure that they're two minutes apart. Well, they're under five minutes apart, which they were two minutes apart. And then we she got showered and stuff, and we came to the hospital, and she's being admitted. Oh, boy. So today, we're gonna meet Levi. Alright, peace. Because uh, if this ain't labor, then I don't know what I'm gonna do. So we, we get in the triage room, and this nurse comes in, and she was a little bit rough. Um, she comes in, and she's like, you know has me put on this little robe and everything and she's checking my blood pressure checking um, my contractions and things like that and she was like mm, yep you're definitely having contractions and I'm like hallelujah that's a good sign it's a good sign and um, you know my husband is playing like worship music in the background which is which was amazing um it was really really helpful one of the ways that i was really getting through the contractions was like every time would they they would come i would say thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus because the contractions mean that the baby is coming your your cervix and all that is opening up so the baby can come out of the birth canal so i was worshiping i had my hands up but when that pain hit y'all like i forgot about the worship music but i was calling on jesus but anyways so she's like okay we need to check your cervix i was terrified of this you guys can look up what it means when they check your cervix and she's like 
you're five centimeters dilated. I'm like, what now? For real? Five centimeters dilated? And then, if you guys, did you guys hear me earlier when I said that I had tapped into this girl's testimony who said that she went to her OB appointment and was told that she was five centimeters dilated. And so, um, just for those of you guys, I don't know if you know much about birth, but in order for you to um, actually push, you have to be 10 centimeters dilated. So if I would have been like three centimeters or two centimeters, they probably would have sent me home. But because I was already five centimeters, they kept me at the hospital. Thank you, God. And it's just amazing that I was even five centimeters dilated going in. So contractions after that are coming, they're coming, they're coming, and they're now the nurses are now preparing for us to go into the labor and delivery room and everything like that. And they were kind of taking a long time, and I was getting so mad. I was like, get me out of here. Um, and I remember at that point, um, I was sitting in the, the waiting room where they kind of check you, and I had two contractions that hurt like I don't know what like I felt it in my back I felt it in my lower abdomen and I just started crying I just started crying and I remember prior to that like maybe like 10 minutes before that I was like man I think I could do this natural uh say what now give me the epidural so you know I told the Lord a while ago I said Lord I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this natural so if it's cool with you, I'm going to get that epidural. You So at that point, I was like, yeah, can I have that epidural, please? So after like two hours of being here, after two hours of being here, they finally moved us to a bigger room. So this is where it's going to go down at. The baby's going to go there. And the mom is here ready to push out the baby. She's doing so good. She's so strong. Um, she's doing amazing, right now it's fine. But when, I, I think two hours ago you were, it was an hour, so four to five, so four to five centimeters down later, so then it's probably gonna be more by now. Um, I think they broke your water over there, when she went in. I think so. That's what it was like, the water and blood on the That was bloody shit. That was bloody shit. Oh, you know what that is? <laughs> so, that was something, but yeah, so it, like, it's not clearly. But, uh, but yeah, so we're just waiting around. They just put stuff in for her. They're gonna give her a epidural because anybody got time for all that mess, right? <laughs> and then when they're done, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. So, yeah. We're good. And uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Jesus. I got my epidural and. Um, they checked me a little bit after, and this is within like two hours. I was already seven to eight, eight centimeters. So I was progressing very fast. Hi guys, so I just wanted to check in. Um, I am currently just resting. I had my epidural maybe three hours ago. Seven to eight centimeters dilated. Um, this hospital doesn't allow us to record videos while I'm giving birth, so I won't have that footage. But um, I just want to say that God is so, so, so good. Um, when I was going through my contractions earlier without the epidural, I was like worshiping through the contractions and of course they did get painful where like I just I cried and um, but God has just been so so good everything that I was afraid of he comforted me in and so um, yeah I could be pushing anytime soon um, I can't really feel anything because of the epidural um, but it's just crazy because I am three weeks early, but um, I'm thankful. So maybe the next time you guys see me, I will have a baby in my arms. We'll see. All right, bye guys. 
which is a blessing because some women are in labor for like 36 hours and it takes a long time but by the grace of god the things happened very very fast for me um, we got to the hospital around 5 a.m around 7 or 8 a.m i was i was seven to seven to eight centimeters dilated um so i had my epidural and um after that, it was just a waiting game. So from about 8 a.m. to 5, um, they wanted to wait for the baby to move down a little bit more. So between that time, I was really running on 10 centimeters. Um, but they really wanted the baby to come down so that when it's time for me to push, I wouldn't have to push a long time. And I thank God for that as well because I asked the Lord, give me nurses and a doctor with wisdom. Um, and sometimes what happens when people give birth, they force the baby out when the baby isn't really ready. And so that's when you get tears and um, that's when you end up pushing for a really long time. Some people will push for an hour, they're pushed for two hours and when that happens, um, you have to get a c-section if the baby's not coming out but thank God you know the way the baby was positioned and then the, the way the baby was I was progressing um, by the time it was time for me to push it was easy so you know I remember uh, being afraid about the pushing because I'm like with the epidural you can't feel anything down here you can't feel your sorry excuse me you can't feel your down there hole you can't feel any holes there so I was like oh my gosh I'm scared to push and you know my husband kept encouraging me the nurse was encouraging me you can do it she was telling me this is the easiest part and um, the part about this that really makes me so happy is you guys know I love worship music so um, there was a song that I had been listening to for a couple of months and it's by Upper Room and the song says to the he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless um, and that's that uh, song is derived from a scripture I believe in Isaiah I'll put it up so you guys can see and I remember singing that song um, the past month or two and not really knowing why I was singing that song but I didn't know that it was going to be used when it was time for me to push my baby out and so thankfully my husband had a speaker that he brought into the hospital room and he played that song um, I'll sing it a little bit. He gives power to the weak, strength to the powerless. He gives power to the weak. And so this is the song that I was hearing as I was pushing my baby. And uh, literally the nurse was like, I think around 6, 45, 6, 30, 6 45, the nurse was like, "Okay, it's time to um, it's time to start pushing," and I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" And so she's like, "All right, we're gonna do a practice push," and I'm like, mm. "And I can't feel anything." I'm like, "Jesus!" But you know, my worship music was in the background. I was ready. If so, if you're giving birth soon or something like that, make sure whoever you're with, they bring a speaker so you guys, so you have music and you're comfortable. Oh man. Oh yeah. And the other song that was playing was, was love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. Cause I am yours. I am forever yours. Then we do the second practice push. And the nurse is like, mind you, this is around like 645, 640, 645. And the nurse is like, oh yeah, you're going to have this baby by 715. I do the third push and she's like, okay, wait, 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 stop pushing. And I'm like, all right, I mean, I can't feel anything anyway. So I stopped pushing. She's like, I need to get the doctor. As soon as she says that, I feel something sliding out my, sliding out. So baby Levi, 
decided to come out just like that before 7.15. He came out at 6.55. So I barely had to do anything. If that ain't God, if this whole experience is not God, then I don't know what to say. I mean, God is so, so good and so, so faithful. And we should never be afraid to ask him, to ask him for our heart's desire. The worst that can happen is he says no and gives us something better. So we should never be afraid to ask. So my baby boy comes out and I hear his cry for the first time and they laid him on my chest. I remember them bringing, them bringing him up to me and his eyes were open. He has these cute, beautiful round eyes and he was just staring at me and it was so beautiful. And honestly, till today, the whole thing seems unreal. It seems unreal, but it also seems like the most natural thing ever to have a son today, to have a child that is looking up to me, that is relying on me. Um, and I am so, so thankful um, that my little baby Levi was born and he was born on June 9, 2020 at 6.55 p.m. And he's been such a joy to have. This new season is difficult. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It is very, very hard even for me to have been able to sit down and record this video is really, really difficult as well. Um, baby is currently with his dad. Um, and I have a lot of like postpartum thoughts that I do want to release on here. So I will kind of wait till I'm about a month postpartum and then I will tell you guys all about how it's been having a baby. It's changed my life a lot um, and I've been going through a lot so your prayers are much needed. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please like, comment, share, subscribe. I hope you guys were able to enjoy this video even though it was kind of rushed so I hope I didn't forget anything. But I love you guys so much. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and um, yeah, I'm going to actually be trying to at least upload once a week. But if you guys don't hear from me, it's really because I'm so busy with baby. Um, but follow me on Instagram and um, I love you guys. Bye bye. Hey guys, so we had the baby and he is right over there with dad and we're so happy and so blessed such a beautiful sight to see him with his dad and yeah i'm eating right now um i started breastfeeding already and i hope to continue breastfeeding um everything had to have been god because it was like literally the desires of my heart like everything went the way that i had in my head so yeah <laughs>